Alright, hello and welcome back. I just need to get my Divine Beast and then uh, go see the ball. And hopefully I get a Jinx Babe thing all the way. Do you hear me already? Hammer, sorry. Did I use a thing? I totally forgot about it. Dragon Bane Crystal. The maximum number of uses of the Dragon Cure Pot has increased. Sweet. So now I should have seven, right? Seven. Sweet.
Nothing else, right? Other secret stuff. No. Alright, let's go. Let's see what we're getting ourselves into. I was about to do this no hit. So two phase. Up oh, the two phase. Okay.
That was a really easy boss. But it did hit hard, so... The enemy was simply no match for you. Huh. I guess they wanted to give a break from Lupin. Thank you very much. Lord Yuan Shao is sure to be pleased as well. <sighs> the night will burn bright when a hero steps forward to quell the world's chaos. As one whose only strength is in contemplating the charts of the sky, all that I can do is offer you my interpretations of the stars, bestowing you some insight of what will come. Place me by your side, that I may ensure you do not stray from the path the stars have illuminated for you. I pray that the stars will offer you their clear guidance in this dark time. Thanks to you, the capital is safe. Now, let us get back to the others. The coalition has split right in half. It has become meaningless. In the end, people will prioritize their own desires. Friendship and the like are not to be trusted in. <clears throat> what a pitiful sight. Master. Now it's the south. A veil of demonic chi has descended upon Xiangyang. But the elixir remains a pressing concern. Hong Jing and I will take care of Dong Zhou, leaving you to head to Zhang Yang if you're willing. Yu Ting, Ting Shi's Jade, the roof swearing and now. Guidance of the constellations. You have received the following rewards. Heat proof ice by one, rank five steel by two, old flame cloud by one, bronze, um, Leubu. Leubu? 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 Da Chow, your dear stepfather. He does so love his daughter, does he not? <laughs> oh. General Soon is heading into the capital. Uh, what is the meaning of this? Perhaps something has happened. I did see father talking to a strange Taoist in the capital. Damn it, father. He's hiding something. We must hurry after him. Mm. Oh. Uh. Yes, brother. You're the one who was at Hulao Guan Pass. I've heard tales of you. I am Swen Chuan, the younger son of Swen Jian. Listen, something troubling is afoot. This is an ill omen. Could father have come to harm? <laughs> Don't talk nonsense! A tiger is not so simply hunted. Right? 
Father? Do not call Sensei. Sensei. I don't know what on earth he was thinking, but Dad's gone into enemy territory alone. We need to get after him right now. No time for talk. Please excuse the sudden request, but this is urgent. Would you lend us your aid? So one has the, the Dad's ferocity and the other has more of the officer thing. Battlefield is now available. Darkness over the Honshu River. Okay, I think that's where I'm at. The lost sacred artifact. Oh. Okay. I kind of want to try that again against that uh, amalgamation. Um. How much time do I have? Oh, I have a bunch of time. Let me go back to the village really quick because I want to see what the new bear is doing and give the cicada and what else did I want to do? Maybe upgrade my armor if I can. So Dong Zhuo finally made his move and seized control of Luo Yang. I can't say I'm surprised. People have always talked about him, saying he's more beast than man. It's strange, though, how he managed to build such a strong army so quickly. They say Dong Zhuo has gathered an army of robust generals, and they've sure proven their worth in fighting the Qiang tribes. That explains why it's a tough battle for the coalition. Ah, <sighs> it's been too long since I last had... That big peach tree there has there's an old legend about. This place was once barren, genuine and soon after. That big peach tree there is an old legend. Truly, it is a dark time we live in. Yet the stars shall illuminate a path to peace. Perhaps you are Oh, they're both here? Okay. If you weren't the staunch ally of justice that you are, you might instead have used your power to wreak untold destruction. But we shall bring an end to the darkness together. No matter how long we have to keep fighting. If you weren't the star, but we shall bring an end. I hate to admit it, but a loss is a loss. You just better not get cocky, or it'll be you eating the dirt next time. I'll Crap. keep honing my skills. And hopefully I'll get a chance to show you my true potential on the battlefield someday. Crap, I I hope I didn't miss the dialogue for doing that side. I hate to admit it, but a loss is a loss. You just better not get cocky, or it'll be you eating the dirt next time. I'll keep honing my skills. And hopefully I'll get a chance to show you my true potential on the battlefield someday. I just noticed that he has a thing on his neck. It's not the tiger one, right? Do you have yours? Oh yeah, it is right there in the front. Kinda looks just similar. Hmm. if I went to see them earlier. Shoot. I'm really forgetting everything because everything keeps changing. <laughs> you brought more! Yeah, yeah! Quick, quick! 
<laughs> more. I need more. 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 <laughs> Got more stuff for you there. Huh? What's that? A new tablet? Let me see. Hmm. Ah, yes, I see. Whoa. Wow. You really are good at finding these tablets. I'm becoming more and more devoted to reading them. Take this. Hmm. Being stuck in this boring I won according to my tablet. Finally a reward. Damn. <sighs> Gotta find more. Let's see what else she has. Uh, where did I... Yeah, where did you put it? Um, and who's that person over there? <sighs> I could use some more sleep. Maybe I'm overworking. It's okay. Um, but no. Um, is there anything else you wanted to do? Um, oh, they give me a three. Hmm. Kind of want to do that again. Anything else I'm gonna do? Mm. Mm. I don't know if I should. Oh, do you sell those quivers? I think you do, right? Oh, there's a regular bamboo repeating one. Might as well buy it since I didn't get one. Two fifty-five. Are they saying like oh, okay? That's what I thought. Um, like that's how many I can get, kind of thing. Um, Something you wanna ask me? Um, yeah, the rewards. I mean, yeah, I could find more of these. <sighs> um,
back. <laughs> Welcome. I don't know if I have one, so I'm just sending it to the salvage. Oop! Star House and Star House. Uh, let me see the Star House. So, it's good. So, Dong Zhao. I see that, but I don't see the. Oops. Okay, so any Dong Zhao officer helmet I can get rid of. Beast for this one. Wait, let me just. Um... Let's just run a bit more. Um... Character directory: blindfolded boy. Thanks to the remaining power left in the boy's jade, the protagonist was able to return to life after being killed by Zhilong. After that, word spread of the Taoist in black appearing across the land that taught Zhilong. In Luoyang, the demonic chi that flowed through the city was used to create elixir and summon Tao Si. Tao Tai. Having realized that the divine beast Ying Long was the key to perfecting the elixir. The Taoist in Black had turned it into Ji Long to aid him in achieving his quest for eternal life. Ji Long and the protagonist cross paths numerous times, but their encounters are not enough to bring the boy back to his senses. Taoist in Black the Taoist in Black stoked the fires of chaos by giving elixir to the Yellow Turbans to create a distraction as he searched for the one possessing the external elixir field who would be able to serve as a vessel for the ultimate elixir. Upon finding a boy he believed to have potential, he ambushed him, turning him into Zhilong so that he could control him. And Gu Guang Zong, he. Gu in Guangzong, he ambushed. Uh, sorry. In Guangzhong, in Guangzhong, he coaxed Zhang Zhao into using elixir, and in Luoyang, he manipulated Zhao Rang into collecting qi, an ingredient of elixir. These actions served to spread chaos even further throughout the land, noting Dong Zhong's, Dong Zhao's ambitious nature. He hinted at the power of the elixir, inciting further turmoil. The, the true purpose of all this warmongering was to amass enough demonic chi to create the ultimate elixir. Liu Bei Zhangdi Sensing an impeding crisis of tyranny by Dong Zhao, Liu Bei decided to join forces with the anti-Dong Zhao coalition formed by 
Guangdong lords at the Battle of Hulan Guan Pass. Hulan Guan Pass. He gained a rep great reputation when he fought alongside his sworn brothers in a raging battle against Dong Zhuo's elite general Lu Bu. When fires broke out in Luoyang, while many lords left for their own interest, Liu Bei united with the protagonist to save the people of Luoyang. Following the disbanding of the following the disbanding of the coalition, he headed for Zhu Province at the behest of the governor of Zhu Province. Um, Chao Chuan. Chao Chan. There he worked for the subjugation of bandits rampant in the region among other accomplishments, winning the trust of Chao Xian. Liu Bei would eventually inherit Zhu Province after Chao Khan's passing. Xing 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 tribes Xing tribes Xing tribes Xing tribes Tiao Xin Tiao Xin's passing. Sorry, just trying to get the names right. Swan Quan Swan Swan Quan courtesy name Zhang Mo is a warrior and politician hailing from Fuchan County of Wu Commandery and the second eldest son of Sun Swan Xuan. Swan Jian. He lived with his mother and brothers in Zhujiang, Zhujiang Commandery when his father fought against the Yellow Turbans. Years later, he settled in Lujiang at the behest of Zhao Yu, an influential man of the area. He dedicated himself to his studies, awaiting his father to summon him. Just like his father and brothers, he can manipulate powerful qi thanks to his Sun heritage. Always calm and collected, Sun Quan has a modest personality compared to his valiant brother and father, but excels in many areas including mounted archery, fencing, calligraphy, and elocution? Aloki, elocution, elocution, elocution. That's a new word. Locution, elocution, election, elo, election, elocution, elocution. Huanggai Gong Guangfu Huanggai Huang Gai Gai Huanggai Crazy Name Guangfu is a warrior hailing from Quanling County of Lingling Commandery. He served as a minor official in Lingling Commandery, Jing Province, until he joined the army being raised by Sun Jian. He helped suppress the Yellow Turbans and participate in the campaign against Dong Zhao, earning a plethora of military accolades. After this, he continued to work, uh, to work as one of Sun's clan's top brass and served alongside Sheng Pu and Han Zhang to support their lord and strengthen his hold in Wu. While a strict upholder of the law, he was often tasked with stabilizing troublesome regions due to his sympathetic policies toward the poor. Thanks to his unprejudiced attitude towards everyone he dealt with, he was not only adorned by his subordinates, but also by the Shan Yu, the Shan Yu and other fringe clans. Shang Pu. I don't know if I'm saying that, sorry. Shang Pu, Shang Bu, Shang Pu. Shang Pu, Shang Pu, Wu, Shang Pu, Shang Pu, Shang Pu, Shang Pu, courtesy name Demo, 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 
Demo. 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 Curiously named Demo. Demo. Is a warrior hailing from Tuyen County of. Yubei Ping? Yubei Ping? Yubei Ping? Yubei Ping? You be, you be, you be, or you buy? You buy Ping Commandery. After serving as a minor official, he began service under Sun Jian. He helped suppress the Yellow Turbans and participated in the campaign against Dong Zhao, earning a plethora of military accolades. Afterwards, he was appointed second in command of the Sun clan and served alongside Huang Gai and Han Dong. To support their lord and strengthen his hold in Wu, being the low serving officer, he often clashed with the other warriors of the clan, but his commanding attitude was respected by his peers, leading him to be known as Duke Chen. He struggled to get along with the young and distinguished Zhu Yu. Zhao Yu, sorry. Distinguished Zhao Yu. However, after seeing Zhao Yu's con constant humbleness, he felt ashamed of his own behavior and began to respect him as his superior officer. Yuan Shao, Ben Shu. Uh, as Dong Zhao took power and began his reign of tyranny in Luoyang, the lords of Guangdong formed an anti-Dong Zhao coalition. Yuan Shao assumed the role of the coalition leader and coordinated a siege on Hulanggong pass. Through great sacrifices, the coalition emerged triumphant in a battle against demonized soldiers and Dong Zhao's formidable general Lu Bu, and jubilantly marched for Luoyang. But what Yuan Shao saw at Luoyang was a symbol of the Han Empire, the splendid capital up in flames, showing little concern for the stupefied Yuan Shao. The lords left him behind in interest of their own goals. Ultimately, Yuan Shao declared the coalition disbanded. Before long, he proceeded to subdue many affluent figures such as Han Fu and Guang Sun Zan and took Hebei under his rulership, rapidly expanding his domain with a deranged drive. Lady Zhen Eventually, Yuan Shao was elected by the Guangdong lords to lead the anti Dong Zhao coalition, and Lady Zhen followed him to Luoyang. In place of Yuan Shao, stunning at seeing Luoyang, Luoyang set ablaze by Dong Zhao, Lady Zhen, Zhen enlisted to help the protagonist to eradicate the demons infested, infesting the burned capital. Witnessing the protagonist vanquish the demon Tao Tai, which had siphoned the demonic chi in Luoyang. She swore an oath with him, praising his bravery and determination. However, the victory ended in vain, as a devastated Yuan Shao declared the coalition to be disbanded and left the scene. Lady Zhen was quick to realize that his warrior star had begun to lose its brilliance. Alright, Divine Beast, Tengxi. Tengxi is an enormous flying snake associated with the metal phase. As it can fly nimbly through the sky even without legs or wings, some think that it may be a creature that ends up evolving into a dragon. Others claim that it was formerly part of Zhuan Wu. In the, in the Sinosphere, it, it is a symbol of di diligence and in the work of Jun Kuang and poetry of Cao Cao, those who unfailingly succeed by maintaining devoted hearts are likened to Teng Shi. Demon Beastinary Tao Tai Tao Tai is a giant demon that has the face of a man, the torso of a sheep, and the torso of the sheep. 
When the anti Dong Zhao coalition arrived at Luoyang, they found the city already in ruins and the area teeming with demonic chi. Tao Tai was created by the vast supply of demonic chi absorbed by Ji Long there. It possesses huge feet that can demolish entire villages in mere moments, with an elixir field that pulses in terrifying blood red and most horrifically has numerous beastly faces and claws jutting out of its body in every direction. Faced with this demonic menace, menace land, lords across the land were rendered speechless, and the residents of Luoyang despaired. I have to kill it again to get the other. Alright. Okay, done with reading. How much time do I have? Okay. Uh, let's go see where the new guy went. There's three there. Oh, let's see. Oh. I used to be a hunter once, but one day I unwittingly took the innocent lives of a bear and his cub. Since then, I've lost the will to hunt and ended up settling down in this village. I'd rather they not get called demons. They've never hurt anyone, after all. Make loud noises or pet them too roughly, gently does it. Make loud noises, gently does it. They seem to know what's inside up here. Just like I'd rather they not get caught. They've never heard. I hope I'm not missing dialogue because I've been, you know, just focusing on the they story stuff. They seem to so. know what's inside here. Just like Shit. Oh, there's always new game plus, I guess, or replaying. I don't know. Uh. Are you the new one? They seem to know what's inside here. Just okay. Um, now for the divine beast. Oh, and the delivery shoot. <laughs> so there's something, right? Okay, enemy status effect accumulation and wizardry spell damage. Oh, I'll try that out. I already read your thing. Tangshi Mistlock summons Tangshi to scatter poison in the area. The attack range and variety of ailments inflicted increase when your morale rank is 10 or above. Cannot be neutralized by the five phases of affinities. Hmm. Okay. Tangshi Resonation summons Tangshi to apply toxin damage to your weapon. Increases damage and ailment accumulation dealt. Cannot be neutralized by the five fires. By the five phases affinities. So, how's it different from the tiger one? Okay, Tangshi increases the damage and uh, the, the ailment, while the tiger one increases the spirit and the ailment. Okay. And this one has spear damage and negative effect. Alright. That's a lot for the negative effect thing. Spear damage from negative effects. I mean, no face spell, spear consumption. Spirit consumption. Liu Bei has given you a replica of his cherished equipment after swearing an oath with them. You have received the following items. A pair of swords of aspiration. Man of Belevolence crown. Man of Belevolence armor. Man of Belevolence gauntlets. Man of Belevolence footwear. Oh. Liu Bei has given you a replica of his cherished equipment after swearing an oath with him. You have received the following items. Large grass knot. Oh, so Liu Bei and Kisasa have a, have a special large grass knot. Hmm. 
That uh, might be something I would like. Except for the damage dealt. A large knot twined by grass by Leo Bay. At a young age, Leo Bay lost his father, a local government official. To make ends meet, he and his mother made woven mats and footwear with grass. During this time, he also produced many forms of ornamental grasswork, including this knot. A served fashion conscious, a served fashion conscious Leo Bay as decorations for his blades and armor, and his handiwork was admired by his companions. Was admired by his companions. Hmm. I really want to give it up for that. Mana beloved its armor. Uh, it's 1.5 less on the physical. Chest armor favored by Leo Bay, made of an arm, uh, made of a leather plate adorned with gold and draped with brocade, brocade, brocade. Brocade, 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 draped with brocade. Large shoulder pads and thigh guards were added to the comp composite leather armor, typically worn by local officers. The gold decorations on the chest are an expression of Leo Bay's penchant for pomp. The fine inlaid embroidery that it persists though frayed from constant wandering and fighting, tells a tale of its quality, a fitting attire for a trusted member of the Imperial family. Yeah, not bad. Uh, what's the headpiece? Man of Benevolence Crown. Headpiece worn by Leo Vey, featuring in a pleasant golden design. A hairpin can be inserted through holes around the base of the metal to secure a top knot. This crown piece is a traditional This crown piece is a traditional adornment of the Han people and was still in style in later Han. Liu Bei dreamed of one day wearing the emperor's crown ever since childhood to a connoisseur of fighting dogs, music and beautiful clothing such as himself. This ornate crown is not simply a decoration, but a constant reminder of his grand ambition throughout his daily struggles and battle. Mm. Oh, thank you. I still prefer the Egyptian look with the, with the other one. Oh, I'm in the green. Yeah, I'll use it. But uh, let me use the other one just to like get the look. Man of Benevolent Gauntlets. A pair of arm guards favored by Leo Bay, constructed of a mixture of bronze and leather. Their wearer's taste of extravagance can be seen in the gold engravings that graces the darkened leather surface. Leo Bay often led the youth and chivalrous men of his hometown into battle standing at the head of his army and driving into the enemy lines leading the charge. His magnificent yet tumultuous tum mu tumu ah tumultuous tumultuous yet tumultuous dual swords technique is enabled by the support of these bracers. This is alright. Uh, Man of Benevolence footwear. Leg guards worn by Leo Bay, made out of high quality hempen leggings and footwear that emphasize functionality. They dry quickly and hold in heat, making them ideal for walking long distances. A standout creation of Leo Bay, who once sold sandals to make a living in his youth. 
His prayer of discipline and violence, standing by those whose feet were suffering, was lauded by historians as the style of the Emperor Guazhu, the vessel of heroism. The swords. Uh, pair of swords of aspiration. And this flowering. Swing your sword in front of you while holding down the arts input. While spinning the weapon, you will block enemy attacks in the same way as guarding. Release the arts input to then unleash a powerful attack. Skyward Evergreen Corkscrew diagonally up in the sky, then perform multiple strikes. Ooh, that's cool. Leo Bay cherished these unique and master masterfully crafted pair of swords that had several ornamental features, including on the blade pattern. The pair is one of the three outstanding weapons Leo Bay had been had made when he procured top quality steel from a merchant while joining the militia force and sent it to a reputed smith in the commandery. Leo Bei was a discipline, oops. Leo Bei was a disciple of Lu Xi. Lu Xie? Lu Xie? Lu Xi or Lu Xie? Lu Xiao? Lu Xia? Lu Xie? Was a disciple of Lu Xie. Lu Xai. Lu Xie. Lu Xai? Shoot. Leo Bei was a disciple of Lu Xie. I don't know. Lushi? Lushai? Luge? Zio? Zio? Okay, so Luge. Liu Bei was a disciple of Luge in his youth, and although he did not study, instead dedicating his time to music and dogfighting, he made friends with many of good character, also developing his style of st swordsmanship. The stall uses a pair of swords to combine attack and defense via dual wielding and is numbered among the five great schools of fencing. My stomach's growling. Guess I best go out and hunt. Nice, but mm, not for me. I'm gonna, after I get the glaive title, I'll switch to the swords. Uh, oops, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Did I get the the title um uh i need 25 more kills with it okay Thank you. 
still need Jing phase stuff, so I should get them along. And does Lady Jin actually fight? How am I gonna build her loyalty? Withdraw to Meiwu Fort. Our capital of 200 years. My men and I are going after Dong Zhou, even if it's only us. You'll have to count me out on this one. Something urgent has come up. Wait a moment! Some of us must stay and help the people! Please, allow Jen to ask the same, my lord. The only one who can set this situation right. Is you, my warrior. I can't believe this. This place was the picture of prosperity when I last came. The elixir Jongrong had. Did it end up being used for this? Gonna end it here.